how will we know we have discerned correctly? When the men of Gibeon came to the people of Israel and claimed to have traveled a long distance, Israel asked them, How will we know that what you have said is true? This is essentially the same question we are asking here. Israel made the mistake of examining the available evidence, but not asking God. Here is another opportunity to ask the Father to send the Spirit of Truth to guide you. Ask Him if this is what the scroll is and who the horsemen are. Ask Him for confirming evidence. Compare the evidence He gives you to the evidence presented here. Discerning the identifications of the scroll and horsemen. If we have discerned the scroll and horsemen correctly, then the horsemen will fit together. The horsemen will fit the scroll. The scroll and horsemen will fit the book of Revelation and show us things to come, and do this in a way that makes sense, isn't forced, and follows good practice of interpretation. Part of the good practice of interpretation is identifying the scroll independently from the horsemen, the horsemen independently from the scroll, and each horseman independently from the other horsemen. If the identification is not done independently, then the horsemen fitting together can be attributed to being identified from each other, and the horsemen fitting the scroll can be attributed to being identified from the scroll. When the identification is done independently, it strengthens the case that their fitting together is evidence that the identification is correct. In this book, the scroll is identified using the biblical and historical evidence about the scroll. Nothing regarding the horseman was used to identify the scroll. Nothing about the scroll was used to identify the horseman. Each horseman was identified using the biblical evidence about that horseman. Nothing about the other horseman was used in identifying any of the horsemen. The horsemen fit together. The first horseman, man. The second horseman, Satan. The third horseman, bondage the curse food for wage conditions. The fourth horseman, death and Hades. Man entered the earth. God gave them dominion in the earth and told them to overcome. They went forth overcoming and to overcome. The food they needed was readily available. They enjoyed peace and freedom. Their relationships with each other, God and creation were healthy and complete. Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 to 31. Satan entered the earth and tempted man. They yielded to the temptation and gave Satan power to take peace from the earth. They were overcome and lost dominion and freedom. Food was no longer readily available. Their relationships with each other, God and creation were disrupted. Men began killing one another. Genesis chapter 3 verses 1 to 7 and chapter 4 verses 1 to 8. Satan took control of the supply of the resources of the earth. John chapter 12 verse 31, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4. Food was no longer freely available, and man had to work to grow or pay for the food he needed to survive. Genesis chapter 3 verses 17 to 19. Death entered the earth and began killing men with war, famine, pestilence, and wild animals. Romans chapter 5 verse 12. Man was without strength to escape the conditions imposed upon him. Only a near kinsman redeemer, who could pay the price of redemption could free him. The proposed identities of the horsemen clearly fit together. This adds additional evidence that the identities are correct. The horsemen fit the scroll. A redemption scroll is a legal document that records a person's legal status with respect to slavery and redemption. It records a slave's right to redemption, the price of redemption, ransom, the qualifications of the Redeemer, and the rights of a Redeemer to redeem. When a Redeemer exercises their right of redemption, the redemption scroll is updated to record that the redemption has been completed and stands as evidence that the person is now redeemed and is no longer a slave. To record a slave's right to redemption, the scroll must contain the identity of the slave. The identity of the slave master from whom the slave is to be redeemed. The condition of the person before they became a slave. The conditions the slave is to be restored to. The conditions imposed upon them by the slave owner. The conditions the slave is to be restored from. Jesus takes the seven-sealed scroll and opens it. The contents of the first four seals are represented by the horsemen. Fit to the contents of the scroll, man is the slave to be redeemed. 
This is in agreement with the other evidence regarding the identity of the scroll as man's redemption scroll. Satan is the second horseman. He is the slave owner from whom man must be redeemed. As each horseman comes forth, evidence regarding man's condition before becoming a slave and evidence regarding the conditions Satan imposed upon man are revealed. The first horseman shows man was spiritually clean, had dominion, was overcoming, and was performing his assigned mission to overcome. Man's original condition of peace is revealed, as the second horseman imposes a condition where peace is taken from the earth, and men begin killing one another. Food for wage economic conditions are imposed. Death and Hades are the final conditions. These are original conditions man must be redeemed to, and the imposed conditions man must be redeemed from. The horsemen fit the legal requirements for the content of a redemption scroll. Following good practice of interpretation, if the scroll is a redemption scroll, the horsemen must fit the legal requirements of the scroll. If they don't, then the interpretation of the horseman is incorrect. If the scroll is the redemption scroll for man and creation, then these are the only horsemen who fit it. The scroll and horsemen fit the book of Revelation and show us things to come. The revelation is to show us things that must come to pass. If the scroll and horsemen fit the revelation, then when we consider them, they should show us things that must come to pass. The scroll and horsemen give us an understanding of our redemption that shows us that we will be freed from Satan, sin, food for wage bondage and death. We will be restored to peace, righteousness, and go forth overcoming. Things will come to pass that produce these results. When we look at the rest of the revelation, we see things coming to pass that produce these results. The Fifth Seal When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the people slaughtered because of God's word and the testimony they had. They cried out with a loud voice, Lord, the one who is holy and true, how long until you judge and avenge our blood from those who live on the earth? So a white robe was given to each of them, and they were told to rest a little while longer until the number would be completed of their fellow slaves and their brothers, who were going to be killed just as they had been. Revelation chapter 6 verses 9 to 11. In Numbers chapter 35 verse 19, God gives instructions about avenging the blood of people who are murdered. The avenger of blood himself is to kill the murderer, when he finds him, he is to kill him. Numbers chapter 35 verse 19. The word translated avenger is goel, and is translated in other places as redeemer. The avenger of blood is to redeem the blood of the victim. The avenger of blood is the victim's near kinsman, their kinsman redeemer. The killing of one clan member was construed by the remaining members not only as a shedding of the group's blood, but as misappropriation of blood which properly belonged to the entire group. The responsibility of the blood avenger, kinsman redeemer, was to win back, redeem, that misappropriated blood by killing the original bloodshedder. This adds to our understanding of redemption and shows us more about what must come to pass. Jesus will destroy Satan, death, the unseen place of the dead and all who worked with them to kill others. It also tells us that more of Jesus' servants will be killed before this happens. The fifth seal fits with a redemption scroll and fits with horsemen who are part of the redemption process. The Sixth Seal Then I saw him open the sixth seal. A violent earthquake occurred, the sun turned black like sackcloth made of goat hair, the entire moon became like blood, the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its unripe figs when shaken by a high wind, the sky separated like a scroll being rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved from its place. Then the kings of the earth, the nobles, the military commanders, the rich, the powerful, and every slave and free person hid in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains. And they said to the mountains and to the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of the one seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb, because the great day of their wrath has come. And who is able to stand? Revelation chapter 6 verses 12 to 17 All authority in heaven and in earth has been given to Jesus. Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 According to Romans chapter 13 verse 4, the one in authority is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. When the sixth seal is opened we see Jesus fulfilling his role as kinsman redeemer, avenger of blood. 
He avenges the blood of those slain and carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. The Seventh Seal The Sixth Seal brings us to the start of God's day of vengeance on Satan, death and the unseen place of the dead, and all those responsible for killing man. When the Seventh Seal is opened, we see the day of vengeance take place. In the concluding chapters of Revelation, we see the fulfillment of God's vengeance. After this I heard something like the loud voice of a vast multitude in heaven saying, Hallelujah! Salvation, glory and power belong to our God, because His judgments are true and righteous, because He has judged the notorious prostitute who corrupted the earth with her sexual immorality, and He has avenged the blood of His servants out of her hand. Revelation chapter 19 verses 1 and 2 the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Revelation chapter 20 verse 10 Death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. Revelation chapter 20 verse 14 And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Revelation chapter 21 verse 4. And he showed me a pure river of water of life clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse. Revelation chapter 22 verses 1 to 3. These are the fulfillment of those things the scroll and horsemen show us must take place. Final observations of how the scroll and horsemen fit the book of Revelation. Finally, the scroll and horsemen also fit the Bible and the book of Revelation in the following ways. Sequentially, when they appear in Revelation fits. Topically, the identities fit the topics covered by the book of Revelation. Scope. The identities are consistent with the scope of Revelation. Weight or importance. The events and matters associated with the identities of the scroll and horsemen are consistent in importance with the events and matters of Revelation. Purpose. The revealing of the identities of the scroll and horsemen work toward accomplishing the stated goal of Revelation, to show his servants things which must soon come to pass. There will be signs in sun and moon and stars, and on the earth distress of nations in perplexity, because of the roaring of the sea and the waves, people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand upright, because your redemption is drawing near. Luke chapter 21 verses 25 to 28.